Good morning. Welcome back to the Okipanoki Heritage Center. We're delighted to have you back with us. And today we have a treat. We're going to ask our executive director, Ms. Carla Eddings, to give us a little run through very quickly. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the Okipanoki Heritage Center. The Okefenokee Heritage Center is a cultural arts center and a history museum. And like John just mentioned, we're gonna take you through some of our exhibits and give you a little bit of a taste, a little flavor of what we have here, and hopefully you'll come out and visit us in person. All right, very good. Where would you like to start? Let's start in the Native American. Area. That sounds good to me. This room covers a lot of our local tribes and in southeast Georgia region. So here you're going to see some artifacts such as tools, pottery, and of course our arrowheads. We have lots of them. And of course you'll want to see our key feature is um, our dugout canoe. This is carved out of cypress and it dates back to the 1200 AD. Then you'll come in here and we'll see a hut kind of depicting how they would live. All right, very good. We have improved our standards somewhat though, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Yes. <clears throat> that is interesting though. They utilized everything that was available to them. Absolutely. And then of course we'll see the clothing that they wore. You know, everyone thinks that it was like what you saw on television, uh, which is the skins, but they, they had regular clothes like they did back in the 1800s. Again, you'll see some artifacts here. And how they would use, like you mentioned, they would use what they had to make their tools. Absolutely. All right, it's looking good. Very good. All right, next we're going to go across the hall to our Founders Hall, where we'll see exhibits from the beginning of Waycross in Ware County. You'll see information um, on our Ruskin community. When was that? It was settled in 1899 and incorporated on October the 9th to 271 residents. Right. That okay, was, that's interesting. It was a communistic um, community back in the day. It was, it was very interesting. Interesting to find out more about that. Then as you come in here, you'll see more items. Very interesting items, household items. Some of the old clothing. Yep. And a bonnet. <laughs> my mother had a bonnet. I remember her having a bonnet, and I remember all my aunts of that period of time wearing bonnets. You'd see them out in the field working. They had bonnets. And they made the little bonnets for the children, too, which was always interesting. Now they think that's very unique, but back then it was common. Absolutely. That's right. Then we have an exhibit for a um, physician and dentist office. A lot of times they acted as both. We have a, a depiction of a church that we have here. This one is from Kettle Creek. Kettle Creek is a very old established church, 1824. And it has a very old cemetery associated with it as well in our heritage aspect as we move along here doing some of these YouTubes, perhaps we might visit out there one day. 
And then we have the Hilltop House. This is an amazing exhibit created by our local colonial dames. And um, hopefully in one of our upcoming videos, we'll have a colonial dame here giving us a little more information and details on how this exhibit came to be. It is a national exhibit. And whose, whose home is this supposed to have been? Well, this came, and it, I, um, we're pulling it up right now. Uh, Daniel Lott built many, many homes in the Waycross area, and this is one of them. And um, like I said, we'll have a colonial dame probably give a little more detail on it. We have some of the items on the inside that came from that period of time. Very interesting. And we have some of the old tools displayed. We have a single tree and a crosscut saw and some of the glassware that was utilized and an old saddle. People forget that transportation was horse and buggy, mule or either horse. Uh, they forget about how all of that went about. My family had horses. I can remember uh, my mother talking about when they were growing up. All their transportation was by horses or buggy or mule and wagon. Of course, we have clothes in here that were homespun on a, on a loom and uh, then, of course, made into clothing. They, uh, I would say they had it rough, but I don't know if they felt it was rough back then because that's all they knew. <laughs> no, that was probably the state of the art. It then. was, absolutely. Yeah. And if, of course, um, school was different back then. So we have a, de a depiction of that as well. We had coal, coal heat. I can remember when coal was a big thing in this part of the world. So as we come on down, we'll come and look at some of the pictures that we have. John, you might want to tell them a little bit about uh, some of these pictures that we have here of yeah, Waycross. Yeah, the, these pictures, if you've been around Waycross for very long, several things in here you will notice that you will see. First of all, the old Dixie Highway Arch. This was out on US number one. And then you'll see the old uh, ACL or YMCA building. <clears throat> Excuse me, when I was growing up, I played football and when we played in the stadium, the home team had to dress right here and the visitors used the stadium dressing room and we were transported then out to the stadium and play, uh, play football. <laughs> that was in 1956, so that stadium's been here for a while. We had uh, the Phoenix Hotel, the Bun Building, uh, Municipal Building, there's some old fire equipment. So these, these photographs are very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you've been here for a while, you'll, you'll see a lot of the old, old way across. So as we come in here, we're going to show a depiction of a surveyor's office. This was um, showing about early um, 1800s. And then the picture on the wall back there uh, depicts when the courthouse, <laughs> there was a battle between Waresboro and Waycross on where the um, county seat would be. So that's another wonderful story. Hopefully people yeah, can, can yeah, check that out. Yeah. Note the chair. Note the chair, how small it is and how close to the ground it is. I always find that very interesting, how, where we were short of stature or small. <laughs> if you notice the clothing uh, from way back yonder, nutrition was not as well and we were smaller people. That's true. Now we improve things and we're... we're <laughs> We're bigger people. We are bigger. Not always taller. We're bigger around sometimes too. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come out to our art gallery. As I mentioned before, the Okefenokee Heritage Center is a cultural art center. And we also try to um, spotlight and highlight our local artists. We have uh, paintings, of course, and photography. But we also try to show some of the other, uh, I think, John, you do woodworking and, and carving. I do. I do some carving, and we display it from time to time. And we also have an art guild. We have several guilds associated with the uh, Okie Pinocchio Heritage Center, and we encourage you to get interested in them and find out what they are. And the art guild is one of them, and it is becoming 
more active now that we've emerged from the pandemic That's and right. getting a little bit involved in things. So we encourage everyone to check us out on our Facebook page or our website and see what we're all about. We'd love to have you. So next we're going to go into this room here which houses our Sacred Heart and our African American and also our rotating exhibit room. So let's look at the Sacred Heart exhibit here. This exhibit celebrates the Southeast Georgia's most distinctive and cherished traditions of singing and this group is located in Hoboken. It's very interesting. For some reason I have just, I can't recall ever hearing sacred harp singing, but it is an old standard of singing within, in the South. So I, I would like to hear that. Maybe we'll, we'll work on in the future getting a group out here one day and uh, having a little music. And I was talking to uh, David Lee, who kind of heads this one up, and he said the experience is actually to being where they're at. Because I asked him about coming out here, and he, he thought that was good, but actually being at the church where they're doing it is okay. part of the experience as that well. Would probably be mm -hmm. better. So the... From these roots exhibit, uh, with our Black Heritage exhibit, this highlights the Black uh, pioneers who established a rich, diverse community. And then on the, as, you, as we pan in here and look at some of the exhibits, um, we're going to see on the back wall will be a map of the community of the early 1900s. So it was a wonderful community. A lot of rich history in this room. Yeah, one of the things I was I was interested in <clears throat> was the college that existed on uh, Ava Street, mm. and we we're gonna have to explore that a little bit and find out about that. That's something we're working on. We're lo looking at some of the old schools that were here, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll have an exhibit on that as well. And in this room, it depicts the lifestyle in that area and in that time of, of early 1900s. One of the things that we're doing as far as the African-American community is concerned, we're also exploring the Red Hill Cemetery. We have the University of North Florida who's been very interested in coming in and they've been doing some work with us and we're trying we're trying to get that as a national historic site. Is that, is that correct? Yes, we're working on so, that now. So that's being worked on as well. So keep us uh, keep us in mind when you're thinking about things like that because there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Okay, and next we're going to go into a room that we call the Rotating Exhibit Room, which we change the exhibits out periodically. The exhibit that we have right now is the history of baseball in the Waycross, Georgia area. So, I mean, we could be in here for hours. We're just going to kind of let you get a flavor of it and see some of the famous people that came here. Shoeless Joe Jackson was here for, for a number of years doing some training. This is where um, our Atlanta Braves began. So there's a lot of um, wonderful history here. Please come on out and, and look at this exhibit in more detail when you have some time. Even if you don't want to look at the baseball, <clears throat> come in and look at the architecture associated with the stadium and the time period it was being conceived. And also, if, if maybe if you're from Waycross, you remember Paul Robinson who wrote for the Waycross Journal Herald for years. He was a sports writer, and he was very well known. I'd like to give credit um, to this room by Miss Marla Howell. They have Plant Cafe, and she put together a lot of this. We had some other people donating items for this exhibit, and uh, Mr. Danny Barnes, who is over our History Guild, he actually helped put this together. So these exhibits come about from you know people in the community that that come together and give us items and, and give us information. And it helps to educate 
our community on the rich history that we had here. Well, it helps to educate also the young people in the community. They don't realize all this occurred. They don't realize we even had baseball teams here. And uh, they didn't take a look at it. It's very interesting. I can remember the way Cross Bears. Babe Ruth actually came here and was said to have hit um, three balls over the roof of the Memorial Stadium. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that at all. Yep. Yeah. You can also look at one of the old newspapers and just look how things were at that time. This is August the 20th, 1924. You can see who worked in Waycross, who was four months for two dollars. Mm. You can see the economy of the time. Very interesting, everything it is, if you like. And I'm sure you like history. It's part of life. So as we go down the hall, we have three more exhibits we'd like to show you. Um, also, Martin Luther King came to Waycross. There's a story behind that. Hopefully you check that out. And uh, Mr. Danny Barnes put together this map with some history on some things that happened. As you come down the hall, you'll see an exhibit about Graham Parsons. He was known as the father of cosmic American music. And they have, every year, they have a guitar pool uh, in his honor. And that is, I mean, that's big. People come from everywhere to come see that. So the Graham Parsons exhibit was created by our past curator, Steve, Stephen Bean, along with some of the local musicians, such as Billy Ray Heron, Dave Griffin, and Mr. Willie Character, just to name a few. The Sons of the Confederacy also have an exhibit here that depicts a history in this area. One of the oldest exhibits that we have here at the Okefenokee Heritage Center is our Nock Terracotta exhibit. These artifacts date back from 1400 BC to 500 AD, and it is an incredible exhibit that you would not want to miss. These are amazing exhibits. This, came, this exhibit came from Nigeria. So this ends the tour of the exhibits housed in the main building. We hope that you stay tuned for re remaining exhibits that we have on the campus of the Okefenokee Heritage Center. We hope you've enjoyed this. We've enjoyed doing it. And we would very much enjoy seeing you here. Thank you, Carla. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you all for coming and, and coming around with us, the Okefenokee Heritage Center. We're on the right track.